The Guardians are off today, so that means they can't lose. It also means they can't score more runs, but maybe they wouldn't have anyway. They wouldn't have. Uh, they would not have, no. Not a good sign when on May 11th you're talking about, you know, maybe it's good to take a break from this team for a day. I think we need a break from this team. That's not a great sign. But, uh, you know, no one wants to talk about the game anyway. We don't want to talk about the game. But a lot of people don't want to talk about much of anything very quickly, it seems, anymore. Um, no matter how many questions you ask, things don't change. And, uh, you know, Jeff, how are we going to improve this podcast if nobody asks us the tough questions? It's up to the people to hold us accountable to to make this podcast better, right? Uh, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Uh, no comment. No tough questions for me because... Uh, you know, I, as we all know, I have a direct line through my tough questions to making changes with this organization and this team that the tough questions we ask here make changes. Other podcasters get paid too. Uh, we don't get paid enough to do certain things, but you want to know what? Let's do a little bit of therapy. We probably could make more money doing actual therapy, but, uh, this is going to better be... help today. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not today, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. And we're going to try to talk through this with you. You are locked on guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland guardians. Part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Today's episode is uh, brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Uh, we got a fun new sponsor coming. I got some pants in the mail on their way. I'll model them on this very show. That's a, that's a threat. Uh, maybe we should figure something out. Like if the Guardians score five runs, I just got to like do a standing episode wherein. The pants, um, the fashion show, fashion show, but lunch, <laughs> fashion. Yeah, it, it's over there's Justin. I'm Jeff. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and every day, wherever it is you get podcasts. I want to thank you for, uh, or no, I, well, I want to thank everyone for doing your part. It is hard to be a Guardians fan right now. Uh, it is pretty depressing. Let's be honest. You can go back to there was that great baseball ad uh, in the maybe late '90s, early 2000s that maybe gets me in trouble now about like people dig the long ball and i just you know remember like i think it was tom glavin and greg maddox being like a couple of cy young award winners over here come on people uh not the best pitching commercial go look up the brad bradkey like mlb commercial that was for a video game yes brad bradkey was once the cover uh athlete for a baseball game that is the best uh commercial for a game but uh yeah it often sells and Cleveland's offense is historically bad uh, on pace for the what I saw, like the lowest home run total since uh, Zach Meisel, as always, wrote a fantastic piece uh, that this data came from since a 1972 Cardinals. I think it was where uh, Bobby Bonds Angels. led the team. Angels. Angels. Oh, Bobby Bonds led the team with 10 home runs. So, yeah, this that's uh, that's where this team is right now. It's, it's a frustrating time. Uh, don't don't. Don't despair. Don't give up. The number of people, listen, I've been doing this podcast. I just started, I just had my four year anniversary. This is my fifth year of doing this. All right. We're at 940 episodes. I've had nearly a thousand episodes of the show. In that time, Cleveland has missed the playoffs once, right? Was it just the one year hiatus? 19. Yeah. So one year hiatus. And you know what? They still won 93 games that year. And you know what's happened? Every single year we've gotten to about May and people are like, they're done. They're done. It's over. So listen, well, we're not going to discuss the game in the nitty gritty sense because there's no need for that today, but we're going to talk about things that stood out. We're going to roll over it. I mean, listen, I'll say what I always say, which is you got to beat the Tigers. You got to beat the bad teams. They are digging themselves a hole. Um, and hopefully it is not a funeral hole. Hopefully this is not like someone's going to put the dirt on top of their season. It could happen. But I think there's too much talent for that to be the case. And look around baseball right now. Look around at the Angels, the Cardinals. A lot of teams are scuffling in the early going. Uh, and before you think the Pirates are going to make the postseason, uh, think about some of the teams that were hot to start last year that didn't hold up. And some of the teams like the Minnesota Twins 
and some of the teams that were not great last year. And I know we said we can't keep comparing it to last year, but I just think in general, you know, I'll, I'll sit and do the math in a second and tell you where we would be in football terms while Justin uh, Justin kind of has his chance to talk about some feelings and stuff. But, you know, it, it, it sucks. I think that's that's an OK word. Uh, I know not everyone loves it. As a teacher, we try to not have kids say it. But, you know, it definitely stinks right now to be a fan. Your uh, frustration, 100 uh, percent. Sadness, 100 percent. But don't don't kick it all to the curb. Like, don't just think it's done. I had so many people tell me it was done last year. And then this team was so much fun uh, in the second half. So that's that's going to be, I just want to kind of, before we get into things, just be like, deep breath in, deep breath out. There's plenty of time for this team to turn it around. There is, but I, I don't know if you can sit there and guarantee it's going to happen because... no. There's not a lot of track record on these guys. And I don't, I don't want to get in. Like I said, I don't want to get into the game today. That game was dog water. Uh, there's no reason to talk about it. Peyton Battenfield struggled early. He got better as the game went on. Uh, defense cost him an error. They couldn't hit. That's playing so they couldn't hit their lefty. That's there's, like I said the other day, Ernest Hemingway couldn't talk about this team right now. They are bad at hitting. Yeah. Um, they're I historically mean, bad. And, and I, again, I'll say Hemingway, not with his, with his depression, maybe not the best author. <laughs> To yeah, not to do. In this team. Luckily, we have a lot of good beat writers covering this team, or at least one uh, good beat yeah, writer. And we'll yeah, get into and, that and, later and in the Zach, show. I think Zach laid that out perfectly again. I, I want to highly recommend his article that we're going to talk about a lot today. But like you talked about, you know, basically they're not hitting righties or lefties. It's even, it doesn't matter who they face, they're not hitting them. But essentially, <laughs> their line this year is the same line hitters had over, uh, off of Randy Johnson. They are turning every pitcher they face into Randy Johnson this year. So. Yeah, and I want to address some stuff from yesterday, too, because there are people who are saying we were rooting for Ahmed Rosario to fail. Look, there's been enough discourse about Ahmed Rosario on Twitter, on social media, whatever, and social media is an ugly place right now if you're a Guardians fan among many places, truthfully. Um, the ballpark is you know, also an ugly place. But neither of us are rooting for Ahmed Rosario to fail. Look, this 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 podcast is infinitely more fun. Infinitely? Yeah, infinitely, if I could speak. Um it's a much more fun to do this podcast since team is playing well. And as much as I kind of don't love Shane Bieber's quote about, you know, we go as a med goes, cause that's a scary thing. The way a med is as a player. Cause he's mercurial. It's is that mercurial. I can't speak today. Uh, maybe I need a day. Mercur- off. Mercurial. Mercur- Mercur- I'm, it's, you know, it's not good when Jeff was correcting me on my pronunciation. Uh, I clearly need a day off. We all need a day off from this team. Um, but he's not wrong. I mean, when he last year, when this team was doing good, he was hitting well and he was running well and they're not running and he's not hitting, but he isn't the only one not hitting. So this is more fun. I think anybody will tell you what, no matter who covers the team, whoever's podcasting about it, it's a lot more fun when they play well and do the things that, I mean, how many times was it fun last year to talk about this disgusting brand of baseball that people got so mad about, about blue pits and steals and advancing on errors and taking the extra base that was fun to see every night. It's not happening right now. So nobody's rooting for Ahmed Rosario to fail. I don't care how, unless the guy turns into to 1998 Mark McGuire, 1999 Mark McGuire, he is not going to be the guy. Even if he does turn into that, he won't be the guardian shortstop next year either. But uh, no, nothing Ahmed Rosario could do better than he can right now or worse than he can is going to make him the shortstop next year. They aren't extending him at this point. They may trade him think things get bad enough, but he isn't going to be here next year. So no matter how good or bad he does, it doesn't really make a difference. It's only if he makes this team play better and start winning and being more fun. So none of us are rooting for him to fail. I think we're just kind of tired of the same old song and dance that he starts out slow and maybe he'll get hot again. Maybe he won't. <clears throat> and he's just not a good fit to hit the number two part of the lineup. And that's not changing anytime soon. It's, it's a dish. And a four for four. Yeah, and a, and a four 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 day isn't going to change that because look, here's my problem. Ahmed Rosario, and this is not about Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario isn't the sole reason this team stinks and can't hit right now. He is just part of a malfunctioning group right now. But this is kind of the whole point of things. Ahmed Rosario today went zero for four two strikeouts against a lefty, which he's supposed to be good against. Uh, but surprise, surprise, I mean this team can hit lefties. But Ahmed had a hundred four mile hour ground out today. That was the hardest hit ball by a Cleveland player today. The first four hits by uh, the hardest four hits today were by Tigers. And guess what? Three of them were were hits, 
the, the first, the fourth was an out, but uh, it was a ground out. It had a negative launch angle. Tyler Freeman had the second hardest hit ball. That was like the eighth hardest hit ball today. That was a ground out. It was 100 miles an hour. That's great. Stephen Kwan, the next hardest hit ball by a guardian. 99 on the ground. It's an out. So that's the whole problem here is you uh, have guys that don't really hit the ball hard. And when they do, it's on the ground. Um, and I know we talked about yesterday about how the Guardians pitching staff is you know, prone to, to more fly balls, but nobody hits more ground balls than the Guardians. And it's oftentimes not a good situation. This is a, a organizational flaw right now that we've talked about for the last year that is a team full of contact hitters really going to make your offense good. I, I don't really know. Uh, it worked out last year. It may work out again. And my whole counterpoint to Jeff Newt was, you know, there is enough talent to turn this around. There is, but he, here's the thing. The talent's not changing. Like you're talking about three players, Rocchio, Naylor, and Valera are the three guys that could come up and, and play. I don't know that that's enough considering they're rookies to go out and be like, ah, oh, this team, they figured it out. They're difference makers. Tyler Freeman, nice player, not a difference maker. Bo Naylor, you know, we don't know. Valera, we don't know. Rocchio, you know, you don't know. And the problem with, with the, t- the, pl- the players they have right now is there's a lack of major league track record. I like Will Brennan as much as anybody. I've said that multiple times in this podcast. If you know, every day or you've heard me say it for the last several months, I think I like Will Brennan almost, you know, as much as anybody besides his family. Um, but Will Brennan, uh, Gi- I guess Josh Bell doesn't really count, but like Gabriel Arias is in the lineup today. You know, Tyler Freeman, all those guys don't have a track record that suggests that Steven, even Stephen Kwan, who was really good last year, these guys don't have a long enough of a track record to say, ah, they'll definitely turn it around because they did it last year. That's one year of a sample. And no matter how good it was, it doesn't suggest that's going to be how the career goes because there's a lot of guys who have had great rookie years. I mean, Jody Garrett is a great example of that. Uh, you know, things that never Kareem turn around. Garcia. Yeah. Kareem Garcia. Kareem Garcia. Like, no, there's, there's those the guys whole... pop up all the time. Uh, Bob Hamlin won the rookie of the year over at Manny Ramirez for no explicable reason. Uh, that worked out great Pat for him. So, well, over he Kenny didn't Lofton. deserve a rookie of the year either. Yeah, no, but I mean, but those guys had good good seasons, <clears throat> and guess what? You pretty much never heard from them again. I'm not saying that's what's yeah. going to happen, well, but I'm saying you just can't assume because yes, they're talented. You know, things don't work out. It is what it is. So again, nobody's rooting for a Medrosario to fail. He is a fun player when things are going good. Truthfully, when he runs and he hits. He does the things that that are help you win with the style of baseball, but the problem is it's very infrequent, and he does a lot of things that don't fit hitting second lineup, and that's not going to change. And we're going to talk about, but I, how you, that does or doesn't change. And one other thing too, it's like it's top to bottom. Like right now, everybody's I bad. Mean, yeah, I mean Jose Ramirez is not a top ten third baseman right now. His OPS dropped below eight hundred again. He's you know he's he's below guys like Edmund Sosa. Uh, or, you know, he's under Matt Duffy has been more productive. Andy Ab- Abanez, who we just saw this past week, much more productive. Like he's, uh, Jose has not been the same Jose since that thumb injury. And again, I know, uh, I'll just throw it out there. I wonder if, how much damage he did in other ways by playing through it. I know, you know, it's something that it's, it's always in the back of my mind, but I'm going to throw that out there. He's literally, no one is doing their job. There is no shining light right now in that offense. No, I mean, I'm not worried about Jose Ramirez. I, I think a lot of Jose struggles have to do with the lineup being bad around him. And I'm sure there, there might be some underlying stuff with habits last year and the thumb and all that. But I think it's just, I think really it's a product of his environment. I think you put him in a better lineup, he gets different pitches and uh, things look a little bit better. I think it has to do with the opportunity with him, but uh, we're going to talk about opportunity. We're going to, you know, we're, like I said, we're not going to get deep into the game today. This game sucked. There's no reason to talk about it. We're going to talk about, deeper issues and interviews and accountability and all this other bull crap that's floating around online that quite frankly, I'm, I'm just tired of. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right. I bought some tickets. I'm going to admit something on the show that uh, maybe I am not comfortable admitting, but I'm going to admit anyway, I bought tickets to the Jonas brothers concert. Yes. My fiance is a uh, big Jonas brothers fan. And I had to get on to buy the tickets. I was home. I worked from home. She's a teacher. Uh, I was nervous about getting these tickets because I know it's a concert she really wanted to go to. Um, you do not need to be stressed out about buying tickets if you use the Game Time app for events coming up in your area. They have concert tickets, tickets to playoff games, 
Who knows if you'll be buying tickets to playoff games this year? We don't know. They got killer deals on last minute tickets, though, in case the Guardians do make the playoffs. Uh, they have best price guarantee, and you can start getting excited for your event instead of stressing out about it. Uh, game time is the place for last minute deals. Forget planning months in advance. You can get tickets right up to the day of the event. Uh, exclusive flash deals on all sports, comedy, theater. Game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time is going to credit you 110% of the difference with that. They're giving you 10% back. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCK.MLB. You'll even get $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code LOCK.MLB for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And the Guardians do get it. We, we get a day off from the Guardians on Thursday. Let's put it that way. And uh, Friday, you can turn on Sirius XM for 7-10 first pitch between the Angels and the Guardians, which we'll talk about those matchups as, uh, hey, surprise, surprise, more lefties are coming the Guardians' way. Um, so we didn't want to get into the – so I'll just make one note of this. Congratulations to, to David Fry. He got his first major hit. I liked the lineup. I, I legitimately thought this was the right approach. I just, you know, I legitimately thought this is the right approach today. I, it, it didn't work out. And, but I do want to say congratulations. That was first hit well-earned, but like, I liked this. This is what I want to see more of. Yeah. He had two good, probably had three good at bats. He, he got a, a single was a flare. It wasn't really a hard hit ball. Uh, he drove one to center field. That was one for an out. It was a well hit ball. And then he also walked. So David Fry had a good day. Tyler Freeman had two hits. One was, you know, a, a blooper that was a, or not a blooper, but it was a ground Almost ball. Like a that didn't yeah. And he got on. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, but it was fine. Gabriel Arias had a hit. But like you said, the three guys in the lineup that yeah. <laughs> should they be reached, in this position. Yeah. They reached base six times. If I'm correct, five of them came from those three guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, was Bell the other walk? I think but seven, like, they got on base seven times, seven sorry. times. I'm sorry. So it was seven times, six of those seven opportunities came from those three players. So yeah. Uh, five, the only, five. Did they? Uh, I didn't get to catch the ninth. Ari, uh, Arius got a hit. Fry got a hit and a walk, and Freeman had two hits. Hits. Okay. So, so five out of the time. five out of the eight. Well, they did they ha- okay. So I missed like the final inning. They had four hits and two walks. The at the end of eight, did they get they something three, else? They had, they had a third walk. They had a third walk. Okay. So so yeah, the lineup was fine today. I agree. I mean, they gave yeah, him minutes a day off. They didn't, ex- really they didn't execute. They didn't execute. They didn't. And uh, not really surprised. You know, and listen, uh, Battenfield is up here because he's the best choice until someone gets healthy. And then he's the first guy gone. And then if they can maintain health, they'll have a hard decision to make after that. But he is, I, I, I don't think he is necessarily someone whose spot is, is locked in. Like he could just be this year's, uh, you know, Kurt. I guess Kurt. it could be. I, I think he'll stay on the 40. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I think because they need the options just in case, but, but I mean, uh, yeah, I think he could stay on the whole year and then he may not stay because they're going to have like yeah. 14 starting pitchers on at the end of the year, but he, he you're going to see both extremes. I mean, he, he wasn't sharp today after he had, it feels like every other game for him. So his next start should go great, but probably, uh, but I will say Tito had something good to say after the game. He said that last year, um, he got away from using that cutter slider, which he can manipulate to look more like a cutter and a slider. It's kind of a hybrid pitch, which, you know, a couple guys in the system have that. Um, Tito said he kind of got away from that last year and tried to go for strikeouts, and it kind of backfired on him. And now when he gets back to using it, he's better. And he said that happened to him today. He kind of got away from it. And um, when he goes back to it, he is a better pitcher. I think that's what happened as the game went on. But, all right, enough about the game. Let's talk about the blame game. Because when you start to act like the media is the problem, I think we've really gone off the deep end here. This is not the Cleveland Browns. And I also want to point out too, I know this is kind of going very meta, but like this is a professional baseball team and these aren't politicians. They're not cops. They're not covering up some crime. There's, you know, even the Mickey Calloway stuff that's not happening right now, as far as we know. Um, So when you talk about holding people accountable and asking the tough questions, the media isn't to blame here. Are there people that have covered the team that, that throw out softball questions that are just, you know, a waste of everyone's time. Sure. You get that anywhere. Um, 
to me, and Zach, Zach Meisel doesn't need us to defend him. He, he has his own podcast, which if you're listening to our podcast, you probably listen to theirs. And if you're not, you should be, because they do great work, obviously him and TJ. And to me, Zach is the standard in Cleveland. Everyone is trying to get to, um, he, and he's not the best of a bad bunch. He is just legitimately good. So he doesn't need us to defend him. But I thought that the, the discourse online about, about questions being asked was garbage because Zach can ask whatever question he wants a million different ways to Tito. You think that he's going to walk into that clubhouse tomorrow and ask Tito, Hey, uh, have you ever considered moving a med Rosario out of the two hole? Tito's not going to be like, Oh, Zach, gee, I, I didn't think about that. You know what? Let's hit him in nine today and see what happens. No, that's not going to happen. He could ask that six ways to Sunday. The first time a manager makes a change to his lineup or his approach because the reporter asked a question about it, it will be the first time in history. Trust me. These guys do not care what you or I think. They don't care what Zach thinks. They they do their jobs. like, And they're, they're dealing with information that we don't have. And there's no, nothing wrong with questioning their their moves and their um, – their failures or, or whatever is happening with this team. That's that's all legitimate and good. Also, don't take watching the post-game show of a network that's about to dr- drop into bankruptcy in a week or two or whoever knows how long. A three-minute window of, of questions aren't all that's being asked in a press conference, okay? That's just made for TV, and those questions have to get on the air. And there are some people who have to ask certain questions because they need – they need certain sound bites. They need content for their shows. Like that, that's just how it goes in this business. But it doesn't matter what questions you ask, because clearly we see in Zach's article today with, with uh, the guardian sitting coach, even when you ask the tough questions, they don't give you good answers. They give you bull crap responses. Uh, yeah, that's, that was, oof. but oof. They're, they're, the point is they're, they're, they can ask the, all the questions they want. And they do just, just because you don't hear on a sound bite on TV, for three minutes after the game doesn't mean it hasn't been asked. The reason it doesn't usually make that or doesn't make a story is because the response was crap. They don't, no one's going to air crap quotes. If you're not getting a response worthy of sharing, then it's not being shared. So trust me. <clears throat> so you can ask all the hard questions you want. It's not going to change the thing. Asking Tito questions about the lineup isn't going to make Andres and Menes start hitting. It's not going to make him move him at Rosario up and down the field. I don't know what you think you're accomplishing by, by suggesting that the media doesn't ask hard questions. Cause one, you know, you're not hearing all the questions out there. Number two, they can ask all they want. Nothing is going to change. And I also want to reiterate again, we're not talking about politicians here. We're not talking about cops. We're not talking about covering up scandals. We're talking about a baseball lineup. And I know it's frustrating, but let's try to keep that perspective as well. Yeah. And and I understand. Listen, one of the advantages of Cleveland is the media is lesser. You know, it's, it's not like New York where you get grilled, you know, and you have to deal with some other things, but even in New York, because I, I live there, it's not like the media grilling anyone changes anything. It, it's not like anyone has changed their lineup because of it. So uh, I think I would just say appreciate Zach. Again, go read his article from today because, uh, you know, I make that, I, I mean, I, I do have to disagree with you. If you get uh, crud in an interview, you're not going to post it because that's all Zach got today from Chris Valleca. Well, that, I think there's <laughs> a reason was, for that, right? There's a reason for that. I mean, uh, for a dude who's, I don't know. He's not under fire at all. He's perfectly fine. He's in year two hitting coaches. Uh, I mean, Derek Shelton was a kind of a failed hitting coach here. He just got an extension with the pirates for their manager. Hitting coaches are weird, mm-hmm. uh, but he just did that. Chris Valake interview is maybe one of the, and again, it, we don't know the tone of things that were said. We don't know, but I read that and I immediately texted Justin. I'm like, are you reading that? Like, I couldn't believe some of the word choice, Yeah, some of what he was saying. It, he just, Again, we don't know the tone, but he came off incredibly poor. He did four questions and then a staffer pulled him away after like Zach specifically asked, hey, can we talk like an interrupted interview after four questions where all of the answers were terse, standoffish and uninformative and showed zero accountability. It was it was not good. Uh, it, it, it comes off really poorly. Uh, so again, Zach's piece was an absolute home run because that was an interesting window. I talked about the comp to, to Randy Johnson with the pitching staff stuff. And I talked about the, the data. So go make sure to read, um, Zach's piece today. It, it's, it's riveting. Yep. Uh, I want to keep talking about that after just a moment. Who? 
we got our good friends over at So Rare. That's so, like the word so, and then rare, like the word rare, how some people like their steak. And I just, I've got a full ad read here, and I'm going to ignore it because that's what everyone loves. Because I'm just going to talk about I have fun with this. Our our fantasy league, uh, I have fun with as well, but I am not good at daily checking things. It is nice to like pop onto So Rare, open up my pack. It's exciting. It hits those little things in the back of your head uh you know that uh that when you're seeing who you're gonna unlock it like shows you the team the position then the player uh i make sure to get in my lineups twice a week uh i moved patrick sandoval into my starting lineup for this weekend for uh i don't know why but uh it's a fun game and it's very simple to jump in figure it out and if you're near the top i have not hit the top of the leaderboard one week i did get close enough that i unlocked two cards uh, you can get scarcity cards that have additional values. You can get game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, and VIP experiences. Uh, so head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team a free player card. Set your lineup, start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. Perfect fantasy game for someone who's super busy. And if you're busy driving somewhere Friday night, and you have a serious XM map or a, uh, a service, check out 710 Guardians and Angels on Friday night and all weekend uh, as they come into town with a bunch more lefties to face the Guardians. Three we'll that lefties. Week. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, so the one quote I want to take issue with is, is uh, Chris Valeka said, yeah, you know, the other team gets paid too about the collective yes, struggle. Of the that, was the worst, that was the worst quote, that I agree. The, and that, that was the that first was, line. Yeah, it's the first one that got printed. So, again, we want to be careful with context here because, as Zach noted, uh, interviews with coaches before games, prior to the game, is uh, doesn't always work out very well. And they didn't even post this on the um, on the media app that they have, or the media site that post all their game notes and interviews in. So this was just a very, you know, exclusive sit-down here. Um, I want to point out that the Guardians lost to – Austin Gomber and Devin Smeltzer, who has been, you know, DFA different places. Braxton Garrett, you got shut down by uh, Clark Schmidt, who's been terrible this year. You got you got four runs off Patrick Sand, not Patrick Sandoval, uh, Patrick uh, Corbin, and the two two were earned. This offense hasn't lit any bad pitchers up. So when you say, "Hey, the other guys get to get paid too," and we've run into some good arms. Okay, Eduardo Rodriguez has pitched his butt off this year. Um, he's looking like he did, you know, prior to last year, which is good for him, truthfully, because he went through a lot last year personally. But you've also run into bad arms. Like you're telling me that, oh man, we ran at Austin Gomber. You just got to tip your cap. No, 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 no. Devin Smelser has been bouncing around the league for a reason. He hasn't he's already been cut to... since then. Like he, right. he came and oh. faced Cleveland and was like, okay, he's, you're not good enough to play professional baseball. You're just good enough to beat the Cleveland Guardians. Like, okay, they lost to Eduardo Rodriguez today. They've lost him twice. He's pitched well this year. They've lost to Garrett Cole. That's fine. That's fine. Those are guys that are good at their at their craft. Chris Sale looks like he's coming back finally. They lost to him. Um, but they've lost to a lot of bad arms lately. So I find that to be an incredibly weak excuse as well. Um, yeah. And, and again, like you said, Zach asked four questions. The interview was shut down and... Um, for whatever reason, it was, you know, I, we don't know the reason, but it's just a bad look. And like I said, again, you can ask all the questions you want. Tito's not changing his lineup because Zach asked a question or Andre asked a question or whatever. Uh, and, and you got to be careful about these things. You're building relationships. It's like talking mm-hmm. to your boss or talking to a coworker or talking to a client. It's just how it works. And this is why people who sit there and say, I could do this job. I'm like, yeah, maybe you think so, but there's a reason these guys went to school for this. Um, all right. I think we've vented anything, anything you want to vent out before we kind of wrap today's show up because we got to quickly talk about some injury updates, the rotation and get ready for tomorrow's show. No, I got my vents out. I invented. Yeah. And enjoy the day off from the team. Go outside, go for a hike. It's going to be, I believe it's going to be nice in Ohio on Thursday. I don't know about you, Jeff, but it's going to be nice in Ohio Thursday. Go for a hike Maybe go fishing, go see your parents, go get some ice cream. Take the day off. It's, you know, it's going to be okay. And it, there, there still is a lot of season left. And I, and the guardians are two and a half games out. And I, and I don't want to fall back on the excuse that, oh, it's early and, and their the division stinks. It does. 
that isn't the goal here. It shouldn't be the goal. You know, hopefully, I, I, as I said yesterday, I just don't want to rely on having to go 21 and six in September. That's the thing. It, it shouldn't be your goal. Your goal shouldn't be to win a crappy division. Uh, the worst, the worst team in the AL East is still better than the best team in the AL Central. It's sad. Um, that shouldn't be your goal just to get in and get hot and hope for the best, but that's not a strategy. And um, this team should be better than that. Anyway, Aaron Savali threw 30 pitches on Wednesday or Tuesday. He is going to make some sort of uh, sim game start Saturday. So he's progressing. That's good news. Um, they didn't mention about a rehab start. So I assume he's not anywhere close until he starts going on rehab. Tristan McKenzie threw on Wednesday. They're trying to figure out what's the next step for him. He could be closer to a rehab, but we don't know yet for sure. Um, yeah, we're still again. He can't come off the IL until Memorial Day, so still some time with him. But he probably would likely go on a rehab before Aaron Savali. But they might might both be getting close. There's still a good chance that the first week of June, both these guys are are close to coming back, if not the second week. So that'll create some interesting decisions. I know Gavin Williams had a great start on Wednesday, and we're going to talk about that Thursday. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much today, but um, we're not going to get a chance to preview the show, or the Guardians series of the Angels on Thursday because we've got a lot to cover on Thursdays as we usually do. So real quickly, here's the bad news. Logan Allen pitches on on, on Friday. That's good. The bad news is, is against Tyler Anderson, who's a lefty. He's been dog, dog. He's been awful. The upside is these lefties have not been good outside of Sandoval. Like Detmers has been okay. But Anderson's Has Kevin Smelser neg- and Braxton Garrett been good? No, I'm saying, but I'm, I'm trying to find a light at the end of the tunnel. Tyler Anderson's been a terrible free agent signing for them. He's got a negative war, a FIP over six, an ERA over five. Uh, so six hits and one run on, on Friday is what you're saying. No, they're going to break out on Friday. They're going to do that good lineup again, and they're going to score five runs for the first time in a long time. They're going to win a game by more than two runs. And Jeff told me yesterday off air that he hadn't drank in a while. I'm so sorry, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It had been a few years. Uh, it had been a few years. Team. And then the Guardians um, happened. Uh, Cal Quantrill, Reed Detmers on Saturday. That's dangerous. Reed Detmers hasn't had a great year so far, but he is a pretty good pitcher. I like him. His FIP is much better than his ERA, so he's been unlucky, which means yeah. he'll be fine on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, he'll be fine. And then Sunday, Tanner Bybee gets to go at it again with against Patrick Sandoval, who has been – Fantastic this year. I have him in many fantasy leagues, and he has He's paid the opposite, off well for me. Though his FIP is not great, so he has been overly lucky. So He's getting me good fantasy points. Detmers, Detmers has been, by FIP, the best pitcher of the group. So, And they hit velocity well, and Sandoval has velocity. Sandoval is the guy they're actually most likely to beat. Of these three lefties, he is the velocity lefty. Probably. Um, hopefully you'll see more David Fry and Tyler Freeman. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh I guess we'll see. Uh, is it a better or worse thing they didn't see Otani? Because like Otani is clearly a better pitcher than all three of these guys, but they've had good also right hander. But they've I also know. like in the past hit him very well. Yeah. So yeah, it's so weird. I mean, I, I kind of wish they were playing Otani just because we could see him pitch. Because as a, as a baseball fan, but be- you always want to see him play. Before we end here, I want to do this thing where we surprise each other that our listeners like and we hate. Uh, I was looking at stuff. Do you know who currently to let everyone know how early it is? And again, to go back to my initial point of there's a chance. Do you know who currently leads all of baseball in OPS? Who is the number one hitter in offensive production in the entire baseball league? It's got to be an Oakland A, just because that's it's got to be weird. It's got to be an Oakland A, right? Maybe. If it's not, if it's not, if it's not Ryan Noda, it's got to be Brent Rooker. It is Brent Rooker. Hey! Brent Rooker at a 184 with 10 home runs. Uh, Sean Murphy I didn't even too. Look that up. By the way, y- Yandy Diaz four. Just uh, make make your heart hurt a little here at the end as well. But at the same time, Brandon Marsh, who the Angels gave up on sixth. So you know, baseball is weird, uh, very weird. Jonah Heim, who we both talked about, as we would have loved to have seen him as a target, is thirteenth. Uh, there's weird stuff all up and down this list. But yeah, Brent Rooker, right there, number one, uh, as everyone expected. I'm sure Twins fans are very. Uh, rational about that right now, just like Guardians fans are when things like that happen. But yeah, I mean, that one can make a case. The best, uh, didn't he like pass through waivers or minor trade that 
I, I've gotten a lot of comments about, oh, the Guardians need to trade for a bat. There weren't a lot of bats that got traded. So actually, the bat they missed out on was Brent Rooker, and Minnesota was never going to trade him to Cleveland anyways. Guess what? He crushes lefty, so the Guardians should go out and trade for him because the Oakland Oakland doesn't uh, – Oakland will trade anything not nailed down to that I ballpark, mean, and they might trade and nailed down to the ballpark too because they want to get out. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about Brent Rooker tomorrow because I think that's okay. there's a good case for – Yes and no, and some reasons why Oakland should absolutely be right, you know, selling their last. They, they should trade them tomorrow. Honestly, yeah, they should sell at peak value, but we'll we'll get into yeah. Brent Rooker tomorrow. That's that's something yeah, it's tomorrow's show around the farm Friday. We'll talk about Gavin Williams start from Wednesday. We'll talk about some of the performances in the minors as usual. We'll do Jeff's uh, college baseball slash MLB draft segment of the week, and then mailbag. So we'll take mailbag questions once again. This is why we previewed the Angel series today, so we can get to your more mailbag questions. Or if you just want to vent, if you want to you know, send us a question for tomorrow's show, but if you want to leave a comment that we, you want us to read on air, just venting about the team, do that too. You know, send us a comment. I'll put us a comment on YouTube. Or, or we can't have bad language. Just yes, keep keep it clean. Keep it clean. But if you want to, if you want to vent too, like you know, if you say, "Hey, read, read," you know, we'd like you to read this, my thoughts on air, we could do that too. Uh, the show depending is, on time, is, it'll be our one other. Depending on, yeah, depending on time, and and if you're if you keep it clean, keep it PG. Um, yeah, so stay tuned tomorrow, and uh, we'll do all that, and yeah, send us your questions for for Friday's show. Like I said, get outside and take some deep breath breaths, and take your allergy meds if if you have to go outside before you do that. And I, I'm going to go on a hike tomorrow, and um, I'll need my allergy meds for that. So take the day off from uh, the Guardians. You've earned it. Yeah. Your sneezes will have better exit velocity than the Guardians offense has had. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> and remember to rate and review, download. It helps. Again, even though the team is struggling, don't make us struggle. Help us out. Uh, we we appreciate everyone sticking with us. And so we're trying to have some fun in here. I appreciate how much uh, conversation the Baez versus Straw debate uh, happened. We'll get into some more of those fun things in the comments. But again, thank you all. And go, go, Guardians, go.